Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel and also welcome to my brand new setup. Now some of you might be thinking, well this doesn't look too dissimilar to the previous setup and you'd be almost right. I'm basically just at the other end of the room that I normally recorded in. So basically this area used to be the control room for the recordings that I used to do. But we essentially just repurposed it so that I could have my drum kit set up so that I can make more videos like this. So today in this video we're going to be talking about how to tune a snare drum. Now it's generally accepted that the snare drum is the most important drum on the entire kit because this is the most customized sound and the one that will set you apart from other drummers. So there's definitely a few points in this video that I really want to deep dive into. One of which is why you would need to tune a snare, why it would go out of tune, the difference a well-tuned snare can make and also the, what's the best tuning for you. After that, we'll jump into the practical side of things. I'll show you how to tune a snare drum that's already got a head on it, like an old head that you just want to tune up because you've not got a new one. And then I'm also going to show you how to swap out a head and tune up a brand new one. It's essentially the exact same process, just with ever so slight differences. So first off, why would you need to tune a snare? Well, the average snare drum has approximately 10 lugs on top, 10 on the bottom. And this allows for super accurate tuning. But the problem with that is that it can also introduce a lot of overtones. Overtones are essentially competing frequencies that don't match very well together and they cause unwanted noises, sounds and just really bad frequencies that pop out and don't give you the tone and sound that you're after. For the more advanced, overtones can be used in a very musical way, however that's definitely going to be for a different video. Secondly, why might a snare go out of tune? This can happen for many different reasons, either the head stretches in and it starts loosening off, therefore it has a different tension. The actual tension rods around the edge can loosen off whilst you're playing. Even different temperatures and humidities can change the sound of a snare. You might be playing in your bedroom, which has got one level of humidity and temperature, but then if you go to an outside gig, or if you've got your drum kit stored outside of your house, it might be that the temperature is really low and the humidity is really high, so that's really going to change it. Also the quality of the snare can really affect it. It might be that it's made from really cheap materials or that it's really old and the materials that it's made from might be starting to deteriorate. So if it's been left somewhere where a lot of rust can get at it and it's just not in a good condition anymore, being able to correctly and properly tune things up might get you out of a sticky spot in a pinch, but overall it is about the condition of the snare as well. Now the difference a well-tuned snare can make is massive. I have played so many gigs before where either my snare or someone else's snare is really out of tune and sounds bad and it can reflect poorly on the quality of your playing and the sound of the band overall. However, taking the time to just tune it up, pitch match a few things, even if it's not up to the pitch that you really, really want, as long as it's in tune with itself, that's going to make a massive difference. I remember some of my earliest gigs and I had a really badly tuned snare. At the time I wasn't very knowledgeable about these kind of things and to be honest I didn't really care. So when we did start playing some gigs, we weren't getting very positive feedback. Then as the years went on I got a lot more experience and a lot more knowledge about how drums interact with obviously not just your playing but then the rest of the band as well. I really started to understand the importance of a well tuned snare. And it is quite often now that I do get a lot of compliments mostly from sound engineers on the tone of my snare, especially when I'm doing things like sound check. And finally, what tuning is best for you? It might be that you're after a really deep and fat sound to get something really grooving, or you might be after a really highly tuned snare that's got a really snappy tone to it. Every genre kind of has a standard when it comes to snare tunings, something that is generally accepted as being part of that genre's sound. For example, in metal it's quite common, especially nowadays, to have a really high tuned snare that's actually quite open. At one time it was quite common to have a lot of gels on the snare drum, so I thought it was really short and snappy and punchy kind of sound. But if you listen to a more modern drummer like 2 from Sleep Token, his snare tone is actually very open. If you listen to his drums on the Drumio sessions, it sounds absolutely amazing and if I'd have heard that snare tone years ago when I was a lot younger I would have hated it because it was so open and I just didn't like that kind of sound. It was too much, it was overpowering and overbearing the rest of the kit. But nowadays I can appreciate how that snare tone is really cutting through and it does actually complement the kit. It's definitely worth researching the kind of genre and music that you're looking to play. Look at as many different bands as you possibly can and see if there's any similarities and consistencies in the tone and sound of these snare drums. Now whilst it might be good in the beginning to mimic those kind of snare sounds, it's definitely worth in the long run to try and come up with your own. Please try and come up with something that is more unique to you. Don't rip off somebody else. It's a good starting point to try and mimic somebody else, but please come up with something that is unique to you. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is troubleshoot. Troubleshooting is about half the battle when it comes to these things. 
you really need to be able to identify what the problems are before you can fix them. I've got my snare here and I've purposely downtuned this and made it all over the place so it sounds horrible, like this. I am internally screaming right now. Now the first thing that I'm hearing there is tons of overtones, stuff is not lining up whatsoever, so that says to me that the tension rods aren't even. Now for my process when it comes to tuning snares, I like to do the underside first. So we're gonna flip this over. I'm gonna release the snare wires from the strainer and then I'll use a stick to put underneath. And that is just gonna keep the snare wires out of the way whilst we're tuning. Now there's really two ways that you can go about this. In the beginning, I would definitely recommend to just completely loosen off all of the tension rods and have them so that they're kind of wiggling within the lugs. That way you can then finger tighten them and you've got a really nice even base to go with. Or if you are in a little bit of a pinch, something's not quite right, you don't have time to just take everything, everything off and start again. The second one is a really great way of just matching everything up and then getting it up to pitch. Now you can use a drumstick and I would recommend to use a drumstick because it doesn't damage the head or you can actually just use the drum key itself. It's entirely up to you. Or I do know some people, I think I got this from John Good, that actually like to use the finger. And what they'll do is actually have their second knuckle hit the rim and then the tip of the finger hits the head and the, that way you get an even tone all the way around. I'm not really a fan of that, I just tend to hit it with a, either with a stick or with the drum key. So we're just gonna go around the head now and I'm gonna hit the head where each of the tension rods are and we're gonna listen out for any super problematic areas. So the first thing that I'm noticing is these two here. These ones are, seem to be causing most of the problems. So if I nip these up just a little bit on both sides, and we'll try it again. So we're still having the same problem. Now it is worth noting that all of the tension rods on a snare drum affect all the other tension rods. It's a bit of a weird pattern, but once you start to understand that pattern, you get a little bit more experience using it, it will start to become clear. Now roughly, the pattern that I found is that whichever one that you are tuning is affected by and affects ones either side and also the one exactly opposite. So as you're going around, you need to keep in mind that whatever it is you're doing to that particular tension rod, it's also affecting the ones either side of it and opposite. So what I'm gonna do now is choose one of the tension rods and use that as a base to try and get all the others tuned to the same kind of note. It doesn't have to be exact at this point, but we're just trying to get it as evenly as possible. Now to me that's kind of getting there, it's a little bit more even, however we're not quite up to the pitch that I want. Typically what I will do with the bottom head is tune it almost as high as it will possibly go. Now when the first time you do this, you're really going to think to yourself that you're going to break the snare drum, you're not. I promise you these things are it's super tough, super durable, and even the heads themselves are pretty damn durable. So we'll do a bit of a before and after, you can hear what the bottom head sounds like right now. and then I'm gonna tune it up to the pitch that I normally have it at, and then we'll see how that sounds. And after. Now with the bottom head tuned that tight, you do tend to get a much nicer, higher, snappier kind of tone, which is something that I really, really enjoy. Something else to know is that the tension of the snare wires will also make a massive impact on the overall sound of the snare. If you have them relatively loose, that means that they're gonna rattle for longer and create a bit more of a sustain. But if you have them super tight, it means it's gonna be a shorter sustain and a much snappier snare. Next, we're gonna flip it over and we'll do the top head. So now we can hear what the snare sounds like with the bottom head tuned, but the top head not tuned. It actually sounds a lot better than it did before, but still not right. Similarly to the process that we did with the bottom head, I'm now going to do the same to the top head. We're going to go around it and identify any problematic areas, even everything out, 
bring it up to pitch and then pitch match everything once again. Now, if I wanted to use that sound in a bit more of a funkier kind of groove, that would actually work quite well. But for me, I tend to do metal, so let's get it tuned up. And now we have. To me, that is sounding absolutely excellent. It's really nice and high pitched and really snappy. So it's got a little bit of sustain. It's got some tone to it. It's not just the attack and then it completely decays. It's got a little bit of body to it and some characteristics. That being said, if you're looking to change the head, it's almost the same process. You just loosen off all of the tension rods, take everything off, put the new head on, finger tighten everything back, and then start that process all over again. So let's do that now. So for the replacement head, I'm gonna be using an Evans 14 inch HD dry. I absolutely love the sound of these heads. You can tune them up nice and high, or you can tune them nice and low. They're quite a diverse head. Whilst they do have some overtones, again, it's quite controlled, so you don't need to put gel on if you don't want to. But if you did need a little bit more control over the overtones, you can either try and tune it out like I've showed you, or you can just put a drum dot on, just to kind of give it a little extra helping hand. So now we're just going to reseat all of the tension rods into the lugs. This process is a little bit tedious, but just trust the process. And then basically in the exact same way that you took the tension rods off, we're going to put them back on again. So with opposites, we're going to finger tighten them right down. And from there, we're just going to bring it up a little bit, then pitch match everything, then bring it right up to tone, exactly where we want it, and then pitch match from there. I tend to start off just doing a full turn on each of the lugs. So we're going to start off with this one, and then we're going to move over to its opposite there, move round one, and then to its opposite, move round one, opposite, and keep going around like that. That way it goes down nice and even. So I've done that one, then I did that one, we're going to move to this one. Again, do a full turn. Now don't worry if the tension rods that you're going round with start to become a little bit loose before you get to them. That's kind of normal. The key is don't overcompensate. Stick to the one turns as we go around. That way each of the tension rods are going to be even as you go down. So currently that's sounding like. Really not great, so now we're gonna get it right up to pitch. Now that to me is sounding absolutely perfect. It's the exact tone that I wanted, exact pitch, and it doesn't take long at all. So using these steps, using these techniques will get you a consistent tone every single time. But that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If there's any topics on drums that you want me to cover, please do let me know in the comments and I'll get to it as quickly as I can. Thank you very much again and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.